number 13. And we started off that whole set, though, with another Egg Collection song, Mark Time. Um, yeah, that was it. That was the folk rock set to start it off. But now we're going to get uh, to the center of the universe, so to speak. And um, there's some big news in the world out there, the spiritual, spiritual world. Isis Aquarian, member of the uh, Source family, that got its start in the late 60s and lasted up through the mid-70s and never really went away because they're, they're all still, they're all still um, keeping it going. Um, Isis has, she recorded back in the day, uh, Father Yod's morning meditations. She recorded them on cassette and they've been buried for years and years and years, but now um, they've recently been digitalized, meaning you can get them and you can listen to them and you can um, take in Father's teachings through these tapes. Um, we're going to tell you how to get them, and where you can get them, and how much they cost, and all that in a little bit. But first, we're going to, um, we talked to Isis on the phone. She called us from Hawaii. And um, we had a nice little conversation last night. We pre recorded it. And um, so we're going to hear that now. Here, here it is um, me and Isis Aquarian on West Coast Farm. We're here with Isis Aquarian. Uh, from the Source family, of course. And um, tell us a little bit about your history with, with the Source family. Um, I came into the family uh, knowing Father as Jim Baker from the Old World Restaurant. And I had known him before he started the Source, and I reconnected at the Source when he was in the early years, when he was uh, Father. And... Um, I just, uh, you know, he'd already done his spiritual pretty much crossover. I, as Jim Baker, I always liked him, and we were, I was friends with his wife, Dora, at the time. Uh-huh. But we, as that wasn't our time. You know, the Jim Baker, Charlene Peters thing was not our destiny. And so I, for a couple of years, I had lost track of him, and I, you know, went on and was doing something else. And uh, then he grew his hair. Uh, became a disciple of Yogi Bhajan's and really got into his spiritual path. And then he opened up the source and I'd heard about it. So one day I went down there to reconnect with him and he came walking out and he looked like Moses and I just went, um, oh my God, this is it. You know, I'm home. It's just like I knew immediately. I mean, I got it immediately. And um, that was it, you know. He made me the family historian and the archive keeper. I became a temple keeper and the, well, what they call the high priestess. Uh-huh. But, um, and then I became one of his 14 wives, too. And I was a family administrator. So I was a little older also than a lot of people that were in the family. I mean, we did have people a little bit older, but most of them were, you know, the young kids. Right. And I had known Jim Baker, so, you know, I wasn't real intimidated by him. I just, you know, I knew immediately what my role was with him. And, and you know, we hit the ground running with it and got on with it. And, and so... It was so, all about the work, so... Right. And so this is a role that you're still fulfilling I'm, to this day? I, I am, because it's not completed. You know, it's... I have all the archives. I've got phenomenal stuff that... that has been kept that nobody has or seen and through Jody Willie who's a mutual friend we were just talking about um, and my source partner Electricity Aquarian we have been able to you know present it uh, we did the book Father Yod and the Source uh, Jody's doing a documentary that will be released this year hopefully with Sundance mm -hmm. um, I'm doing some other things, and we've got a website up. And the website uh, is? Uh, the website is yahoa.org, Y-A-H-O-W-H-A.org. And it, that really has everything you want to know on it. But these tapes, they, they were done on cassette tapes, and they're like almost 40 years old. And, like, I just really didn't know what to do with them. Most people don't even have the ability to transcribe them anymore. And, and plus, some of them were broken, and, you know, the film was falling off of it off of it because it was so old. But we did find global recording artist Carl Anderson. 
I connected with him um, through Sky Saxon of the Seeds, who was also a Source family mem member named Arlick. Right. I, I, I met Sky the first time about in 1985. Oh, my God. It was, <laughs> and I was, always, I was a big fan of the Seeds, and I, I met, got to meet him. I, mean, he got, I was in a band then, and we played, he played and sang with us, and that was fantastic. So that was kind of my introduction to the Source oh, family, actually. I know. He was just a, a phenomenal being that totally operated always from his heart. I never heard him say a bad word or unkind word about anybody or anything. It was just, he was like Johnny Appleseed. We, you know, I called him Sky Sky Yehoah Seed because everywhere he went, he always praised Father. He always gave the name. And, um, yeah, I just, I love him so much. But, so Carl is doing, um, before Sky passed over, he was working with Carl Anderson, and Carl had basically saved most of his archives and had remastered his work and, you know, was going to re-release them and put them out. And, and right now he's working on a tribute album to him, which is billed as the largest tribute album ever done to anybody. And so far it's four discs. There's like, I know there's like over a hundred artists and they're all very famous bands or people. So it's like, how can you leave anybody off? Carl just has to keep adding disc. But um, anyhow, so through Carl, uh, because I did, uh, I recorded a, a tribute, for the tribute album uh, from Father and the Source family. So I started working with Carl and I told him about the cassette tapes I have because he's got global recording artists, right? And he said, oh my God, let's do it, I can do it. So anyhow, we partnered, Electricity and I partnered up with Carl and we've been working on this for over a year. We finally got the first series out, which are 39 morning meditation tapes, which are 39 hours. They're on a MP file, you cannot download them, you have to order it, we put it on a disc. And um, it's just phenomenal. Can you, it, it, can you describe the, the morning meditations? Sure. Um, one of the reasons I'm really excited about this project more than I think any of them is because it you can time travel. Time travel is real. You can now go back to the 70s and you can hear Father, the real deal, in real time. You know, nobody has to even speak for him anymore because... Throughout these various classes, he just he nails everything, everything we were about, any of our teachings, any of his concepts, anything he wanted us to do, anything about that time frame, anything about now. I mean, it's you can hear it direct from him, you know, undiluted, and that's very exciting as far as I'm concerned. Yes, definitely. So and, and and plus, you. They are. We didn't. Uh, we didn't take anything out. What Carl did was he took out dead spaces and hisses and cleaned them up. But um, you pretty well have the raw deal, exactly the way it came down, what was happening, what was said, the interaction between father and the family, uh, music being played in the background. You know, talks with the musicians. Um, 4 a.m. channeling from, you know, the Akashic Records in the, in, in the Cosmic Realms, and then hearing him go into Earth Matters with the family, if there was any, you know, things that needed to be settled, the people weren't getting ready to go off to work. I mean, you just got it all, our daily life, who we were, what happened, the way it was done, the way it was said, that whole genre of who Father was and who the family was, and you could sit before Father now, and the one thing Carl was telling me was this little guy, Mark, that he, his assistant that he has that was working on the tapes, wasn't exactly what he, he was a good person, but he wasn't exactly a spiritual knowledge person or, you know, had any, um, you know, linking to those, to that, to that venue. Yes. <laughs> and he said, but oh boy. When he got through working on these tapes and listening to Father hour after hour after hour, uh, he got it. He's like a completely different person. <laughs> you know, he's just like, oh, yeah. 
So we, we, so we've got the first series ready to go, and we've already got the second and third series ready. Uh, we're just, you know, we're working them on it and finishing up for, for, for sets. But right now we're offering our first series. And we're going to hear a little bit, bit of it tonight. Um, but I, it would be nice if you could maybe describe a little bit about what, what it looked like, what it felt like to be in these morning meditations. Well, we were a banded group of oneness. We were one vibration after living together for so long with the same uh, with the same standards. You know, we all did the same thing every day as far as our program. You know, what we ate, how we ate, when we did it, our morning meditations, how we dressed, food we ate. And, of course, we had the famous source restaurant, so... You know, we were interacting with, you know, the Hollywood elite, along with the rock musicians, and um, which didn't phase us. We actually thought we were more famous than they were. <laughs> but that's what they liked. That's what they liked about coming to the source. Nobody bothered them. And um, so morning med- especially morning meditation was the time we all... That was the one time we all really looked forward to, because it was the one time every day we could count on being together, everybody. Uh, then after that, everybody, you know, had different things they were doing, or by the time they got home from work, Father maybe would be in his room for the night. So that was the only time the whole family was together as a complete whole unit. And it was the time that things got straightened out. We didn't carry things over until the next day. So every day we got to settle issues. Um, It was the time that we got it direct from Father. It was like a feeding. He was like a multi-layered titty goddess. You know that goddess that has all the breasts? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what he was. And it was like there was enough for all of us, every one of us. You know, nobody lacked anything. And he related to soul over personality or ego, and that was how he was able to do it with all of us. And he showed us how to do it with each other, and that's how 150 people lived in one house, in complete alignment, contentment, balance, uh, harmony, joy. I mean, I'm not saying we didn't have our issues, but they were... You know, they, they didn't have the edge to them. And, and we knew that we had a way of understanding it and understanding everything and everything would be resolved or we'd be helped with it, you know, along our journey. We lived by spiritual law over man's law. So that took a lot of, you know, took care of a lot of it right there, if you understand what I just said. Maybe you can explain that a little bit. Well, we had our own realm. We lived in our own reality, and it didn't have the hooks and the pulls that living in this reality have, because really, pretty much living in this reality involves ego and personality. You live in a spiritual realm, or you're, you know, that's how how all the high masters did it. They weren't bound by that set of rules, or the, I call it kryptonite, it was like, you know, we're all Superman, we were spiritual Superman, and we didn't have that kryptonite or those hooks, you know, into us. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So morning meditation was the highlight. It was the climatic point of the whole adventure every day of being with Father and the family. And uh, we laughed, we cried, we sang, we danced. Uh, we ran into the light, we, like, I mean, how do you do all these things in, like, one to two hours, anywhere, ever? And then sometimes, you know, they, the musicians would get up and play, and the music was divinely inspired, you know, from the cosmos, which, you know, people are listening to on, on, on the albums that have survived from that time frame. You know, the whole Yehoah 13 albums, which was Father's signature band. Right. And he said that he would long be teaching through those albums long after he was gone. 
Well, you know, we had other family music, which is just as incredible. Like, I, have you ever heard Savage Sons of Yehoa? Yes, I have. Oh, my God. That's like my one of the best, isn't it? That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and some other ones. And then I have I found a lot of lost music in my archives that Drake City Records out of Chicago is remastering and, and re-releasing. So it just continues. It's still exciting. It's never stopped. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's great. I saw I saw Jin perform a few weeks ago, about a month ago, and he was great as ever. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the musicians have gone out and they're doing their own thing. You know, a lot of them were musicians before they came into the family. So it's just like that's you know that's once you're a musician, you're a musician. That's your thread, right? Yep. So yeah, they're just you know everybody's still doing stuff, and we're all doing what we're doing. We all had our own part and role in the family, and we apparently are, you know, still do now. Everybody's just doing what they're doing. And so, so the morning meditations took place at the house. Yes. And they began at very early, very early in the morning. Four a.m., which which Father said was the hour of the saints. It was the hour that everything was quiet, even nature. Nature wasn't quite even up yet. Um, it, was the, it was the hour that the mindset, people's thought projections weren't happening because most people were asleep. So it left the cosmos, it left the energies very uh, open and clear. And there was a, there was a ritual with uh, the sacred herb? Uh, yes, uh, the herb is um, marijuana. We took everything and 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 put spirit to it. We had the sex, drugs, rock and roll, and we just added spirit to it. Our sex was tantra. Uh, our drugs was you know sacred herb, which was one hit in the morning. You know, marijuana has been used eons as a sacred substance for rituals and enlightenment. And well, for health issues, for, for you know others, other things. So yes, we did. We did. We did it only once in the morning, and that was it. And our our sexual practices were highly respected, honored, and and we didn't have orgies like some people thought we had. And it wasn't a free for all. You know, it was very consensual, and there was protocol in everything we did. You know, r- rock and roll. You know, well, we all know what we did with our music. It was spontaneous. It was like it left the personality and ego out of it. What these, what you know, what the brothers were doing with Father and what some of the family musicians were doing are like, you know, the, uh, uh, amazing, amazing stuff that was coming through. Yeah, it is, and we're gonna we're gonna listen to some of some of the music tonight as well. Oh, good. So we're gonna have the. As much of the experience as we can. <laughs> oh, good. Well, you know, one of the things we were we were part of the forerunners. We were part of the pioneers of that crossover into a spiritual genre. And when the when the Eastern vibration hit, it's like Father knew there was something to balance that. And that he brought in more of the Western energy and for a balance for it. Um, we got into, you know, a lot of the mystery school teachings and the whole the whole reason and the whole thread that is still still carrying through is because we are our next evolutionary process is from a mere man to a spiritual being and I think that's a concept that we can all understand at this point. Right? Definitely. Okay. Like like we like like somebody like to describe it like from ape to man, or well, we're going from man to a spiritual being. And that was the prototype of what Jesus was about, you know, whether you believed in him or not. He was the prototype for this energy, this new evolution. And so everything we had back then was for the building of that, for our, our, our crossover into our spiritualness. And... You know, we're all just trying to get a passing grade. In there. It's a new frequency, and all of this old programming and MOs aren't going to fit into it. 
And I think that's what's happening here these last 10 years, what 2012 is about. It's just, you know, it's a way that's carrying people to a different frequency to fit into that evolutionary process. That's great. That's, uh, and so one way to, to, for people to start with this is if they're not familiar with the Source family is these cassettes or the MP4s of the cassettes. Right. I, I, that could be one way. Yeah. Well, you know, Eric, I'm not saying we were the only way. <laughs> everybody's got a part of it. You know, everybody's on their own path, and no skips, no steps can be skipped, and it's all valid. And this was just our frequency. You know, this was just our part. I think it's very telling, though, that so many of you of you people are still very much involved with this. It was our foundation and it was true. It was the real deal. When something's true and real, it doesn't fade away at last. You know, we just, our struggle was just what, we, what were we going to do with it? How, you know, who were we now? And I, you know, until we all realized that you know, that was our foundation and it's up to us to do what we want with it. You know, yeah, no, it's, um, it's something that was real and we, we saw that it worked, you know, we lived it for years and, um, so we, we know the value of it. And now it's, now it's time to spread that value and get more people involved. Yeah, well, we're definitely would like to share it and, um, there you go. Well, it was great talking to you, Isis. And um, I will um, be spreading the word about these these tapes. And um, everyone can go to yahoo.org and order them. And right. They're only twenty nine ninety five, including shipping, which is very, very reasonable. Because you got there's a lot of there's a lot of message there, and well, you also you also get into it it was a, a you know for all of us we weren't doing it for the money and you get a free uh, uh bumper sticker as well right i just saw that on the website <laughs> <laughs> i thought oh how cute that's great yeah. more insane. Well, sure, well eric is there anything you want to ask well there's tons i want to ask but i, I kind of think... took over the, the no no this is great i tonight we wanted to concentrate on the tapes because we're going to play some of them so i wanted to concentrate but Maybe another time we can we can bring up another topic because there's there's actually a lot I'd like to talk to you about um, the music and all sorts of stuff. But like, all right. But um, let's, you know uh, what? Nothing's off the table. Get your Q and A's ready and let's 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 kick it old school. Let's, do, let's, let's do make it. this a regular thing. Maybe we can have some more okay. of this kind of stuff. Yeah, and we can maybe do a conference. We can bring in a couple other people, which I always like. Kind of works too. That would be great. All right, so uh, we'll talk about it. All right, Isis, thanks for um, talking with us, and uh, Isis Aquarian here on West Coast Fog. Aloha. And when our work is done
and live by the teachings of your earthly spiritual fathers. The first commandment, the eighth commandment is, each morning, join your vibration with the ascending currents of universal life energy using the method that your earthly spiritual father has taught you. That's past tense. I am long gone. What have I taught you? We never do anything the same way twice, do we? We actually tune into those energies, and those energies speak to us what to do, what to say. And this is what you will do as fathers one day. If, there's always an if, if you can listen, if you can obey. It does not say each... Uh, or, or you can miss one or two mornings that uh, really doesn't make too much difference. But at the time you do show up, uh, make an effort to tune in to the universal life energies. It says very clearly, each and every morning. Each morning. What are those Ten Commandments anyway? Father does not speak of them now too much. You've noticed that? They're the commandments of the future. It will not be till at least 125 years after Father has gone that they will be accepted by mankind. You think the commandments of Moses were accepted immediately? You do not know what would happen to those who embrace those commandments? No, commandments are never expected accepted immediately. They look at those commandments and they get uptight against me. They say, oh boy, were they written in ego. Look at that nut. First commandment, my God. Second commandment, are you kidding? They forget those with their limited vision, their limited view, that those commandments are only for you. Now, later they will be for mankind. They're the commandments of the future. Now, read from that distant point, what do you see? First commandment, well, of course, that's my father, that's my flesh father. How can it be any other way?
just look as she stood and she smiled, but no answer she gave. But she drew me. She said.